Hi everyone, I am Jane and I am teaching at College Tingkatan Enam Tun Fatima in Malacca. I am teaching Wet at the college. Now, today in this lesson, we will be looking at some speaking skills. Now, some of the speaking aspects that we will be looking at, firstly, how to use grammatically correct language with correct pronunciation, stress, and intonation. Secondly, is to speak with confidence and without the unnecessary hesitation. Now, these are some of the skills that we need to know. We also need to speak using appropriate language and vary it for the intended purposes and the given task and to suit the audience. Lastly, we also need to look at expressing our opinions and giving reasons. And these are some of the things that we will be looking at in this lesson. Now, for your information, in wet speaking exam, there are two tasks which you will need to accomplish. Now, the first task is where you will need to give an oral presentation individually of your ideas for two minutes. Now, the individual presentation is based on a written prompt. In other words, a situation will be given to you. The situation consists of a task and an answer. Now, the second task in the speaking exam would require you to interact in small groups of four members between eight to 12 minutes. Now, the group discussion is based on a written question and normally four to five prompts, four to five prompts in the form of my map is given to stimulate ideas in your head. Now, let us look at an example of the first individual task. Now, let's say today's topic is studying in the universities. Refer visual one. This must be a topic close to all your hearts as studying in the university must be the first most important reason why you are pursuing your Form 6 studies and also why you are taking the MET exam. Now look at the pictures. What can you see? Can you discuss about your feelings looking at the pictures? Now, this is a sample of a question in part one in the speaking exam. Look at visual two. In the speaking exam, as you would have known by now, each of you will be given an alphabet. A, B, C, or D. So if you are candidate A, you will be speaking based on the point given to candidate A. Now, looking at visual two, you are to talk about the point for two minutes. But of course, you will be given two minutes preparation time. Now, as candidate A, you will talk about the importance of studying in a reputable university as the factor to be considered when deciding on a university to study. Now, as candidate B, one will need to talk about the importance 
of the location when deciding which university to go. On the other hand, if you are candidate C, you will need to elaborate on looking at the availability of courses when choosing which university to apply to. And lastly, candidate D will focus on the availability of facilities when deciding which university to study. Now, as you can see, the same situation is given to all candidates. Differentiation is only in terms of the answers. So, the situation in Visual 2 is for candidates to suggest factors to consider when deciding on a university to study. Now, the factors are different for each candidate. So, each candidate will try to convince the examiners with their arguments based on the already given factor. So, in the actual exam, you will be given, all the candidates will be given two minutes to prepare your presentation. One minute to read and two minutes to prepare. During those two minutes, you need to brainstorm ideas in order to elaborate on the factor or answer given to you. Come up with at least two or three elaborations. And for each elaboration, do provide an example in order to help to give you more ideas to talk. Now, by talking, by giving examples or sharing stories, these are great ways to help further explain your points to the examiners. Also, you need to remember to use appropriate linkers or conjunctions in order to ensure a smooth presentation. Now, sequence connectors are like using first or second. Now, by using these sequence connectors, it will help your examiners to follow your presentation. So, in answering the task for individual presentation, each candidate may come up with points like this. Refer visual three. Now, a candidate A may argue the importance of choosing a reputable university. Had, they, had candidate A be given the answer as reputable university, then they need to come up with, they can come up with reasons like graduates from a reputable university in future will have a better employment opportunity. And second argument, you may say that a reputable university is also more likely to encourage new research and use of current technology. Now, had you been a candidate B and the factor given to you is about location, then you can come up with factors like um, location is important because then the, the student will not need to worry about congestion or heavy traffic on the road. As your second reason, you can also come up with a um, reason like uh, location is the most important consideration when choosing a university because if the university is near your home, your house, it saves cost. You can also further argue that you will not need to take multiple trains or buses when attending classes. So, in, 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 in short, uh, a suitable location will help you to save costs. Now, it is also wise to use low-frequency words. Low-frequency words are like, instead of using the word tired, everybody uses tired, you, may, you use exhausted or lethargic or drained. Now, instead of using happy, why not use amused, delighted or joyful? 
use petrified, terrified or even horrified instead of the common word scared. Now, if you are familiar with the app Pinterest, you can find that in Pinterest, they have many pages on synonyms. Now, why using low-frequency words is encouraged? Simply because it will help attract the examiners to your speech. It shows that you have a varied vocabulary, vocabulary list in your head. Now, two important considerations when awarding marks during the speaking exam is the two important considerations is the first is task fulfillment. Second is your language. Now ask yourself, have I answered the needs of the question in sufficient depth and clarity? Have I used suitable vocabulary? My sentences are grammatical and I have correct pronunciation. Now, this we are talking about pre-university English use. The key aspect here you must remember is to speak. You need to speak. You are not allowed to be quiet or hesitant. It is important for you to present relevant views or arguments in a logical structure and to express yourself fluently. This will help your examiner or audience to follow your train of thoughts clearly. Now, as, as pre-university students, sometimes you may not have any ideas to speak. And one strategy to use when you have run out of ideas about a topic is to give examples. Give a comparison or consequences. You could either use your own examples, stories about your own, or based on your friends or your families. This will ensure you have things to say during the speaking exam. Now, I find this really effective when candidates run out of what to say during the speaking session. Now, to give examples in the form of stories, this is the easiest. This is the easiest way to speak because you need to speak during the speaking exam. Besides, you must also consider some of the do's and don'ts. Now, you need to be, firstly, be courteous and diplomatic. You need to, during the exam, in the speaking exam room, you need to sit upright, calm, confident, and smile. You need to maintain eye contact. Even if you are not looking at the examiner, you should look, be looking at your uh, group members. Use appropriate hand gestures and body language. Speak clearly, audibly. Pay attention to your stress, intonation, and pauses. You need to open your mouth when you speak in order to be clear. On the other hand, what are the things that you shouldn't be doing? Firstly, don't mumble. I find this really annoying. Don't use fillers like, mm, uh, keep fidgeting with your pen, pencils. Make personal remarks. These are the things that you should avoid. Now, let us look at the sample of a question in part two in the speaking paper. Now, refer visual four. Here, as you can see, the topic will be a continuation from the earlier tasks. They are connected. The topic in task one and task two are connected. Now, in task one, the question was to suggest factors to consider when deciding on a university. In task two, perhaps the question might be like, what is the most important factor to consider when choosing a university? Now, each candidate 
during the group discussion is free to choose any of the five points given and be ready to present and argue your choice with your group members. Now, you are allowed to choose any points, even if it's similar to your group members. You are given three minutes to prepare your points after your individual presentation. And the group discussion is within eight to 12 minutes. In this section of the speaking test, you may either agree or oppose ideas from the other members in your group. You need not agree to their opinion, to their choice. For example, if you use one of the ideas given, like student to professor ratio, you may, you may then, if you choose that point, you may then need to expand on that idea by coming up with reasons to back your choice. Why did you choose student to professor ratio? Now, look at visual five for an example on how one idea from the list given is expanded. Let's say you have chosen student to professor ratio as the most important factor. Then your point of argument may include things like, firstly, it will provide a closer relationship between you, the professor, and your classmates. You will then further elaborate that by saying that through this closer and better bonding, it will, of course, influence the quality of the teaching and learning processes. Now, ideas to discuss the given topic may be taken either from the given ones in the test, or you may come up with your own ideas in order to discuss the given topic. What is important is that by the end of the discussion, you and your group members need to come up with a consensus. You need to agree. This means, if possible, come to an agreement as to which factor is the most important one when choosing a suitable university to study. There are, there are also cases when you do not agree and it is still okay. Now, without you even realizing it, you may be performing lots of language functions like um, expressing opinions. Also, you will be given, giving reasons during the group discussion. You will be elaborating, you will be justifying, you will be inferring, you will be evaluating, initiating. Perhaps you will be prompting your friends. You will be negotiating on certain points. You, there will definitely be turn-taking, interrupting your friends in order for you to come in. You, there will be summarizing and concluding. Now, in the group discussion, you are also expected to address the topic at a much abstract and conceptual level. This means you ought to negotiate your way with your group in finding a common understanding and finally agreement. Group discussion is a bit different from the individual presentation. This will be in terms of having to, in group discussion, you would have to prompt your group members to speak. You would also need to interrupt your group members so as 
to be given a chance to speak your thoughts, or even sometimes you need to initiate the discussion. Now, obviously, speaking on your own and speaking in a group will be different. So, now you have been given a clear description of what is required from you in the speaking test and how do you go about answering the two parts in the test. Now, can you tell me what are some of the important features that you need to remember in order to do well in a speaking test. Now, the most important thing is to speak. Now, what are some of the do's and don'ts? What are the things that you shouldn't be doing? Now, for your own practice with your teachers, you can try this. Uh, refer Visual 6. Now, in Visual 6, a sample question for group discussion is given. The question is, how can positive... Let's say the question given is, how can positive education be taught in schools? Here, four prompts are given. Sometimes they will give you five. Now, the first is, is it by providing a supportive relationship between teachers and students in order to promote positive education in school? Or is it by teaching students a range of relationship building skills? Or is it by participating in projects that involve commitment to learning to juggle? Or is it by teaching resilience skills where they can practice and reflect upon? So, four prompts for you to choose in order for you to carry out your group discussion. My advice to all of you is to choose an answer that you have the most ideas on. The one that you understand what it is about. Now, it doesn't matter if the other group members were to choose the same answer as your elaborations and your examples will still be different and uniquely yours. If you do not have much ideas, my advice to you is then to listen carefully to your group members and try to make some sense of the topic quickly within a given time and from there to present your own ideas. Now, before I say goodbye, I would like to remind you the importance of reading widely in order to enable you to keep yourself abreast with current issues and also to improve your English language proficiency. Now, you need to remember that without sufficient input, which is reading extensively, speaking as a form of output will definitely be difficult. Now, the more you read, the more words you will have to verbalize, to speak. Then, of course, with more words, the clearer your speech will be. Now, I believe now with the schools closed, you should use the time wisely. My all-time favourite advice is to read. There is no better way to improve one's language proficiency than through reading. Research, time and again, has proven this as the most effective method in improving one's language proficiency. With that, thank you so much for listening and all the best.